welcome back guys to so today's endless review contains and in today's video we're talking about the gastroesophageal reflux disease make sure you subscribe after watching this video or before watching it don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you're going you're not going to miss on any upcoming video now let's get started what is gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is also called GERD? GERD stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease, and it is a chronic condition where the stomach contents flows back up into the esophagus, which is mainly due to a damaged or weak lower esophageal sphincter. And GERD is sometimes referred to as acid reflux disease as well some people have ram random episodes of acid reflux and it goes away but GERD is when it occurs more than twice a week for a long period of time and what's why is that why is GERD happening the lower esophageal sphincter is not staying closed but it's opening and this allows backwash of stomach contents and acid into the esophagus and this leads to major irritation to the esophagus physiology let's talk about the physiology of swallowing food digestion starts in the mouth when food is chewed then it is swallowed the food is then squeezed down into the esophagus and the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes to let the food into the stomach and, when, and then it closes again to prevent the food from backflowing. The parietal and chief cells are stimulated from the food to produce acid and digestive enzymes to break down the food. But in GERD, the acids and food can flow back into the esophagus. Key points to note in GERD include the esophagus. The esophagus is the tube that connects the stomach to allow food to enter into the stomach. It squeezes food down into the stomach each time we swallow and the lower esophageal sphincter opens. It plays a role in GERD. If the esophagus is unable to perform this role correctly due to impaired mobility the lower esophageal sphincter collects it's a collection of circular muscles at the end of the esophagus that closes and prevents toxic acids and gi content from flowing back into the esophagus once it enters the stomach the lower esophageal sphincter can become weak from pressure due to delete gastric emptying and also ania pregnancy obesity overeating or medication such as antihistamine, calcium channel blockers, antidepressants, sedatives, and smoking. How does a aorta ania causes GERD? A aorta ania happens when the stomach pushes through a weak diaphragm and sits on top of it. All the stomach should content should be below the diaphragm, and the esophagus should be above the diaphragm. When the ania forms, there is a pulling of gastric acid content in the anated area and this increases pressure and causes the lower esophageal sphincter to become weak also the esophageal closes at irregular times due to impaired mobility esophageal mucosa lining it erodes and becomes damaged over time from the constant backwash of acid contents and also hence there's esophagitis complications are esophageal cancer buried esophagus narrowing of the esophagus and bleeding now the stomach acid and content erodes the esophagus if the acid and content mix it past the upper esophageal sphincter it can enter into the lungs causing pneumonia aggravate asthma signs and symptoms coughing ear infection voice changes chronic cough and nighttime coughing which is called lar laryngopharyngeal reflux all these are the things GERD can lead to now what are the complications of GERD complication of gastroesophageal reflux disease one inflammation of the esophagus there's increased risk of cancer from the chronic inflammation there's narrowing of the esophagus which is the strictures lung problems asthma pneumonia voice changes wheezing fluid in the lungs Barrett esophagus lining of the esophagus is replaced with similar lining that makes up the intestinal lining signs and symptoms of dread 
Note, not all people with GERD will have heartburn, but may have chronic cough, recurrent pneumonia, regurgitation of food. There's also gastric pain. There's excess regurgitation of food, bitter taste in the back of the throat. There's regular occurring burning sensation in the chest or abdomen, and it can be so intense it feels similar to MI. There's also dry cough, frequent dry cough, which could be worse at night. There's um, nausea and vomiting, problem swallowing. The patient always feel like he have a lump in his throat, and there's also lung infection. How is GERD diagnosed? How can you simply diagnose this? Endoscopy is one of the major things that is done. Endoscopy is used to assess the esophagus for changes, erosions, and structures. Esophageal mo monometry it looks at the function of the esophagus ability to squeeze the food down and how the lower esophageal sphincter closes. That's the esophageal monometry. There's also the pH monitoring. Esophageal monitoring, in which um, you that the pH monitoring measures the acid amounts in the esophagus for a 24 hour period as the patient performs normal activities of daily living and the small tube stays in the esophagus to help measure the acid amounts. What is the treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease? The first Thing you should tell you should have at the back of your mind is lifestyle changes, medications, surgeries, surgery also is on such as fundal application, which is where the fundus of the stomach is placed around the lower part of the esophagus. That's um, the fundal fundal application is done in severe cases. What is the nursing intervention for GED? Assess patients for signs and symptoms of GED educating and administering medications per the doctor's prescription, assess quality and characteristics of the pain, and differentiate the signs and symptoms from a heart attack. Assess for other signs and symptoms rather than heart burn. Do they have respiratory changes? Is there a dry cough that is worse when lying down? Is there hoarseness of voice? Is the pain aggravated when eating a heavy meal? What food makes it worse? Help develop a diet plan to decrease signs and symptoms. What medication are they taking? These are the assessments you do. Now, assess also for the signs and symptoms of aspiration. Assess for coughing, voice changes, low oxygen saturation, increased respiration, abnormal lung sounds. Education for GERD. This education you have to give includes it's Tell the patient to eat small meals rather than large ones. You have to prevent overeating. Avoid food that relax the lower esophageal sphincter. Avoid greasy food, fatty food, alcohol, soft drinks, which because this increases pressure on the lower esophageal sphincter and causes regurgitation. Avoid coffee. Avoid peppermint or spearmint. Avoid eating right before bed. Last meal should be three hours before bed. Sit up after eating for at least one hour. Weight loss, smoking cessation, watch acidic food such as citrus and tomatoes. The major medication used for GERD includes antacids, histamine receptor blockers, PPIs, and prokinetics. Now, antacid. The antacid neutralizes acid and the, we use it, the magnesium hydroxide, calcium carbonate are chewed thoroughly and then swallowed. Antacid might interfere with many drugs like the antibiotics, causes um, mucosal bleeding. So make sure you always give antacid alone and allow for one to two hours before administering other medication because it interferes with other drugs. That's antacid. Now, the other medication is histamine receptor blockers. This decreases secretion of gastric acid and um, type of histamine. We have the ranitidine, HCL, the Zantac or famotidine. Then anyone that eats with tidin, short term opiarium basis. How do they work? The histamine they block histamine receptor blockers block histamine, 
when histamine is released it causes the pyrethral cells to release hco but this response will be blocked so gastric acid secretion will be decreased now the proton pump inhibitors it decreases stomach acid and helps esophagus heal we have the omeprazole and the those that end with the prazole long-term usage but there are risk and there's also increased risk for fracture and the other medication that is used is prokinetase, and this prevents delayed gastric emptying by improving pressure in lower esophageal finster and peristalsis of the GI tract. Thank you. This is the end of the lecture on gastroesophageal reflux disease. If you learned, kindly subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on the notification button and watch out for other lectures on the, about on the Eclex and also follow us on Instagram for daily Eclex questions and some Eclex top tips. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. And this is Ruth Dada.